We welcome those of you who just watched the Camping World Truck Series race at New Hampshire on FS1. We're just getting started only four plays into the game. The UCF Knights have the football. After a loss of five, Juwan Hamilton being looked at and now being helped off the field. He is the main tailback for the Knights, and we will try and find information about his stats. Not great to lose running back in the first series. The, the good thing for UCF is five different running backs touched the ball in the, their opening game against FIU. Who didn't touch the ball in that first win? They had everybody touch the rock. Quick out into space. This is Snelson. Second time he's touched the football. Makes the first man miss and gets out to the 45. That's a pickup of 11. Offsets the loss of five on the previous play. Yeah, this offense is designed to put pressure on the secondary. Get the ball outside the players, the athletes in space, and force that defense to make one-on-one -on -one tackles. Terrapin's trying to get off the field defensively. Third down and four. Milton, another quick hitter, and it's a first down once again. Taj McGowan, his first touch, and the chains will move. Beautiful little play. Milton recognizing the twist up front, has pressure, shows pressure. As soon as he sees it, knows where to get rid of the ball quickly. That's so key to take pressure off your offensive line. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Knights playing with a little bit of urgency on this drive. Short gain on first down. That's the third reception for Snelson. This game is playing out perfectly for UCF. They want to spread you horizontally, get the ball outside, and as Danny say, let these guys do something with the ball in their hands. Maryland's not scared to bring some pressure. It's four and five man early. Now the advantage when you go fast is defenses usually have to tip their hand. Now it looks like Maryland is pulling a check after UCF check. That's the chess match of these two teams. McGowan runs into a wall after a short game. Well, maybe UCF has the trucks right where they want them. Another third down. Knights have already converted a pair of third down. 36 here. They want to stay out of uh, third and long as much as they possibly can. Obviously, this UCF offense, they just want chunk plays, five and six at a time. If we're in third down, we want third and manageable. Adrian Killens checks in. He wears number nine. He's in the backfield next to Mackenzie Milton. Milton creates time, throws deep to the end zone. Incomplete. Oh, a terrific recovery. He was looking for his tight end, Jordan Aikens. That was a risky pass right there. But if you've got a 6'4", 262-pound tight end running out in the middle of the field, if you give him a chance for it, he's big enough where he can body up some defenders. But that was double covered. But I don't mind taking a risk with a tight end like that, with that type of size and athleticism. The coaches raved about Aikens' athleticism. I don't mind that shot there in that position. It was Darnell Savage from Maryland who knocked the football away. Mac Loudermill will punt the football for UCF. Fair catch called for and made at the 12 by DJ Moore. UCF, they cannot score their first time with the football. Maryland will have it when we come back. If you're currently watching on FS2 or Fox Business, please tune in to FS1 when we return. Scoreless game, UCF Knights didn't score their first time with the football. Now the Maryland Terrapins with an opportunity. You know, a difficult start for UCF. There's their starting tailback, Juwan Hamilton, the sophomore from Miami. He is being taken into the locker room. And if we find out more information, we will pass that along. Maryland on offense for the first time. They start first and 10. From the 12, true freshman quarterback, Kasim Hill, his first pass is caught. Good way to start things off. Jaquiel Bay with the reception. Eric, you're not kidding. I mean, I just saw a freshman quarterback survey both sides of the field, getting deep through his progression. Wasn't flustered, went one, two, three on rhythm and got it out of there. That's the type of poise I was talking about off the top of the show. He is really impressive. 
He is a local kid, Washington, D.C. Big time get. Programs all across the country wanted him. He's sad to say local and play for D.J. Durkin in the turf. Here's the run. Ty Johnson, their home run hitter. Going between the tackles. And he'll pick up the first down. Keep an eye on Shaquem Griffin, number 18 for UCF. This guy can do everything. Converted safety. Conference defensive player of the year last year. 11 and a half sacks, 20 for a loss. He can do everything. Line up, cover receivers, rush the edge, get inside and bang with the big guys. I'm excited to watch. He'll operating out of the gun as he will the entire ball game. Quick pitch out in space. Harrison's second consecutive carry. He gets to the boundary and will bring up third down and short. Trey Neal on that tackle. The Shaquem Griffin, the best move he might have made was when his coaches switched, switched him from safety to linebacker. Much more versatile in that position. Gets around the football, flies around. Said they, he said, I didn't, you know, I was asking about technique early. He said, just run to the ball. So he's just running out there trying to make plays. Really a student of the game, too. Second down and three. Knights thought someone flinched up front from Maryland. No flag. And this is a short game, maybe a yard for Lorenzo Harrison. And that guy, Shaquem Griffin, credited with the tackle. Lined up on the edge like an outside linebacker here. Does a great job using his one hand, by the way, Danny, yeah. which is just an unbelievable story of what this kid can do. Can play off a tackle and get in on, on uh, the play. Really impressive. Look for him to be, they'll use him all over the field today. Third down. Hill's going to keep it himself. No, that's Johnson out of the Wildcat formation, and he can't get going at all. Tony Garan makes the stop, and it'll be fourth down. That was a great run blitz by this UCF defense. Sometimes you blitz to stop the run. That's exactly what they did here. Blitzed into the field, away from the boundary. So if it was a pass and Kasim Hill was trying to roll out, they take away his main weapon, which is running to the field and throw it on a run. There is a flag down on the field. Big conference. Play, foul, offense, number 84. At the play, personal foul, defense, number 25. The foul's offset. Put down. Jaquiel Bay and Kyle Gibson called for the infractions that are offset. It'll bring up fourth down, and the punt unit will come on for Maryland. Wade Lees is the punter. He's a 29-year-old from Australia. Oldest player in the Big Ten. He is the third oldest player in FBS. Mike Hughes back deep to field for UCF. Ball bounces at the 30 and takes a terrapin roll inside the 10. Just an absolutely gorgeous punt. It's going to result in UCF football at the six-yard line. Back with more in a moment. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Wendy's Fresh Never Frozen Beef Hamburgers, the official hamburger of the NCAA. Welcome back, everyone. Capital One Field here at Maryland Stadium, College Park, Maryland. UCF, their second offensive possession, passing complete, looking for Adrian Killens. UCF, if you missed it a moment ago, they're playing without Jawan Hamilton, who was taken off the field and taken into the locker room. Hamilton, the leading ball carrier for the UCF Knights. Right up the gut, looking for some yardage. This is Killens, and there's not much there. Shane Cockrell with the tackle. It'll bring up a third down. Let's take a look at our keys to the game, sponsored by Boyd. Well, for UCF, they have a motto. It's called no block, no rock. And what that essentially means is if you're a wide receiver on the outside, you better block for your buddies when you get those man-to-man -man matchups on the outside, because if you don't, you won't see the rock. It's got to be a team effort. This Maryland team, good to great. A big fan of Jim Collins, Walt Bell, the offensive coordinator. So was, yeah, we're, we're pretty good, but can we take that next step and be one of the greats? Yeah, both teams have been prolific offensively. 
in early games this year. And that's a catch. Jordan Aiken, potential All-American tight end with the catch, but there is a flag down. It's a 12-yard gain pending the penalty. And it's against the Knights. That's interference. Offense, number 13. Happens to the goal. Third down. Uh, Gabriel Davis, true freshman, with a costly penalty. Gabe Davis on the outside. So you can see him behind the receiver there. He was basically holding on to that DB who might have blown up that play. So pretty good call from the officials. So the ball is spotted at the six. UCF converted twice on third down. Their first time with the football from the end zone. Milton throws a dart. Oh, should have been picked off. That ball should have been picked off. Antoine Richardson was dreaming of six. Well, that was a really late developing play. As Milton was hanging in there trying to survey the field, comes back across, and the safety playing center field saw it all the way, reading the quarterback's eyes, and almost bounced right in front of him. That's what you want your middle field safety to do. He's going to protect you over the top so everybody else can match up underneath and really just be the safety valve for anything. Loudermix, second punt. Oh, oh. Terrapin's got good pressure. He gets it away. DJ Moore fields on the run. This would be great starting field position for the Terps. A 38-yard punt, an 8-yard return, and it's Maryland football from the 33-yard line. DJ Moore. The fall's hottest night, Empire, followed by Star, starting at 8 Wednesday, September 27th on Fox. Welcome back, everyone. Maryland with the football for the second time, and this time, great starting field position. They're going to start at the 33-yard line. Last time they had the football, they started on their own 12. I like a shot here. Try a shot play. True freshman quarterback, Kasim Hill, gets to the direct snap. Good protection, plenty of time, throws a dart, it's caught, D.J. Moore. That's the favorite target of Kazim Hill. It is a big-time gain on first down at 15 yards. Trey Neal with the tackle. You watch here, look at Shaquem Griffin, actually with great coverage in the flat, but this, he, this window opens up here to where there's nothing you can really do. Really? D.J. Moore is really the, he's the go-to guy for Kazim Hill, the young freshman, so key to have. Easy read for the quarterback, too. 15th catch on the season for Moore. Quickly back to the line. Hill, pump fake. And didn't have anything there. That play was blown up. There is a flag down the far side of the field. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, first down. Now they called it. Now this is one point of emphasis for defenses across the country. I know every defensive coordinator is frustrated that offensive linemen are able to move downfield as a quarterback pursues the line of scrimmage. And that's what happened right there. They had a little play action pass. You see the center guard, there were two or three, <laughs> about four or five yards downfield. Two or three of those linemen. But Danny, that's the problem with all these run pass options. A right. lot of times the linemen don't know if you gave it or right. you're, you're pulling it back to throw. Right. Five receiver formation. Now DJ Moore joins Hill in the backfield. Moore's got it, and he's brought down rudely. Pat Jasinski with the tackle. Jasinski hadn't played much this year, just that one game back in August. But at all these practices and in preseason camp, coaching staff raving about the improvements he's made. Jasinski, no question, it has become a much better player. That was a good job by the cornerback, Mike Hughes, who's only been here a few weeks, setting the edge, making the ball carry turn back inside and send it to your help. So negative play, makes it second and 14. Hill is blown up, picked up a couple, but again, it's Jasinski, Jasinski, the man on the spot. Pick up of just two. Remember off the bat, we talked about, A.J. said this is a quarterback that likes to run over people, not around them. This is one matchup against Pat Jasinski. He might want to go around him. He's not going to win that battle many times. On third and 12, Jake Funk comes into the game for the first time. He's number 34 in black.
that's a key uh, a key possession for Kasim Hill. If it's not there, throw it away. Don't make any mistakes in the red zone. Pressure. Hill avoids. And he is thumped down. Jemias Pittman, Shaquem Griffin. And that hurt Kasim Hill. He's still on the ground. Man, that was a vicious hit. That's one thing you don't want to do as a quarterback, I would imagine, Danny. If you're scrambling outside the pocket, is to spin back inside towards the D lineman pursuing. Yeah, you never want to run, cut back against the grain. Because the double spin move into the D lineman, it's not going to end well. And Jemias Pittman just saw that coming from a mile away when he was in pursuit. And that is getting crunched by a 6'1", 310-pound mm. defensive end. That will hurt. Well, Hill's a big guy at 232 pounds. But that's still 80 pounds less than Pittman. Watch this. He spin move once. That's fine. He goes for it again. And that's when you're going to get cracked. These D linemen can absolutely fly. I know it's, it's, it's like everybody in college football can run. But when you, you turn these, this film on, you watch the D lineman for UCF and Maryland, both teams. I've just, it's amazing to watch how big these, these guys are, but they're downfield sometimes 25, 30 yards. Well, with Hill still down on the ground, we're going to take a timeout. We'll return in a moment. Sunday with Fox NFL kickoff at 11. Kasim Hill being helped to the bench for Maryland. He was down on the field for a couple of minutes and now he'll be looked at. So concern on the Maryland sideline. Well, it's fourth down and a 34 yard field goal attempt for Henry Darmstadter. He was nine for nine on extra points a couple of weeks ago against Towson. This is first field goal attempt and it's true. 34 yarder and DJ Durkin's Terrapins take a three nothing lead. Well, we have them all. Let's check in with Greg Wolf in L.A. for a game break. Eric, thanks. Home opener for 12th-ranked Florida State facing NC State. Seminoles haven't played since September 2nd because of Hurricane Irma. Ryan Finley to Jalen Samuels. 14-yard score. Wolfpack lead 27-21. Seminoles trying to get the ball back with under two to play. Back to you guys. Oh. All right. Thank you so much, Greg. Well, uh, Florida State playing with a true freshman quarterback like we've seen today with Kasim Hill, who unfortunately just left the game. But it is tough to cast young guys just getting to campus. Not a lot of practice to go out there and lead teams. It's just not easy. Danny Cannell, you mentioned just a couple of days ago that you said your very first start as a college player at Florida State was on this field. Was right? here, yeah, yeah. We came up here to College Park. Charlie Ward had a hurt sternum. And uh, I didn't know until right before the game, Mark Rick very wisely didn't want me to be nervous all week. So he kind of said doubtful with Charlie Ward. He told me about three hours before the game, you're getting a nod. So we came up here, I got my first start. And you first got win. the win and got out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> up back in Maryland, it was an ACC team. Yeah. Things have changed. Terrapins have a 3 0 lead. Danny Sutton kicks off. Spinning kick. Killens from the five. And Killens spins, stays on his feet, and struggles past the 20 to the 22. So UCF, their third possession now. Mackenzie Milton, who had just a wonderful day back in week one. He was the American Athletic Conference Player of the Week for what he did against Florida International. Off to a relatively slow start here through the first games, the game's first 11 minutes. I think you're seeing this team kind of shake off some of that rust. It just takes some time in this rhythm-based, up-tempo offense to get everybody back on the same page. Right up the gut, power running, Taj McCowan, and again. You know what hasn't helped either is this defensive line for Maryland's been pretty disruptive up front. They haven't been able to establish the run. UCF hasn't at all. They're so deep. Six, eight different D linemen are going to play today. No matter who they throw in there, they're all explosive and they, they hold the line of scrimmage well. Milton. On the perimeter, the ball is tipped. Is it caught? It is. No, it is not caught. Jalen Brooks had it, but I guess he trapped it against the field, and it's just an incompletion. It'll bring up third down. A really good matchup on the outside. You're seeing two players go up the ball, go up for the ball. 
J.C. Jackson tips it to the inside. The ball definitely hit the ground. Or did it. We'll have a look at it. Gutsy throw by McKenzie outside the numbers. Yeah, that was best on best. He was trying to go to his favorite receiver, Traquan Smith, who's the stud receiver for UCF. And Maryland's best cover corner is J.C. Jackson, who did a pretty good job breaking that up. And then you see Jalen Brooks, number 43, try to get to it and keep his arms underneath, but that ball definitely rolled out at the end, did not have possession of that all the way through the tackle there. Yeah, that was a wonderful shot. That was uh, definitive. Well, if anything, this is going to give UCF an opportunity to think things over and come up with, with a, a good option here at third down and eight. Third down. It definitely gives them time to regroup a little bit. Scott Frost and, and the offensive minds to uh, figure out what can kind of get us in rhythm. What can we do? They, they use their tempo to try to keep this defense off balance. But Maryland has had an answer for everything they've thrown at them so far. So what can we do to kind of get that ball rolling? This is a, a pivotal third down deep in your own zone. Scott Frost, second year head coach, calls the plays. So this is his idea of a third down at eight. Lined against the 33. Milton lobs it up, and that's not where Smith was headed. Smith stopped his route, being guarded by Dino Ellis. Punk team will come on for the third time here in the first quarter for the Knights. This could definitely be a product of uh, having all this time off. Your, your timing just isn't there. Kenzie Milton just misfires there. Miscommunication is he thought his receiver was going to convert to a fade route there. And you just never know what who screwed that one up. Clearly a miscommunication. Spiraling kick. DJ Moore calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 27 yard line. 48 yard punt, no return. Well, tonight, catch a full slate of college football on Fox and FS1. Coming up next at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. You got the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners taking on Baylor, followed by Notre Dame and Michigan State at 8 Eastern on Fox. Then at 10 Eastern, it's the seventh-ranked Washington Huskies battling Colorado on FS1. College football tonight on Fox and FS1, where every game is everything. That last game, Washington, Colorado, rematch of the Pac-12 championship game. Feel like it's flown under the radar this week. You know, that Iowa Penn State's been talked about a lot, but that, that one's kind of just flying under the radar. It should be a fun one. Well, we have a new quarterback. This will be the third quarterback used this season for the Terrapins. Max Bortenschlager, sophomore from the Indianapolis area. He is from Fishers, Indiana. He replaces Kasim Hill, who's being looked at on the Maryland sideline. First pass completed. DJ Moore to the 45. Man, he just lowered his head like a battering ram to pick up extra yardage. DJ Moore has the body of a tailback, and we see it right there. We almost braced for him to take a huge shot from the safety, and DJ Moore bounced off and kept it going. On the ground, Harrison. He's across the 50 to the 48 yard line. Well, Max Bortenschlager looks the part. He's 6'3", 211 pounds. He is a sophomore with a bit of experience. Guys, he started one game on the road a year ago out in Lincoln, Nebraska against the Cornhuskers. And that's key for him. Just to be, have that experience of playing on the road in a hostile environment can go a long way, but this is not an ideal situation for the Terps. Johnson. Is fake to the quarterback keeps it. And that was blown up. Griffin in the backfield for a negative play. Danny, if you're an inexperienced quarterback, what's the toughest thing to handle that a defense can throw? At? Uh, the blitz usually. I mean, that's what I was always told too as a backup was you better be ready for pressure because defensive coordinators are going to test you out. They're going to see if you can handle the blitz, see if you know where your hots are, the protections are, put the pressure on you. Pass is complete. It appears to be short of the line to gain. It was Tavon Jacobs, his first catch. He picks up five, but he needed six. That was a pretty good example. Just a will backer blitz, but they're bringing pressure just to make sure. Fourth down one. 
Maryland stays on the field, and I don't think so. Bortenschlager couldn't find the crease. Titus Davis wraps him up. UCF's D-line really won the line of scrimmage there. Went backwards. Didn't he, not even a stalemate. He lost yardage on this fourth down, third down play. Excuse me. Fourth down play. They ran to the line and could not convert. Danny, what, there is actually an art to running a quarterback sneak. Am I correct? <laughs> Don't ask me. That was my. I hated quarterback sneak. But what they tried to do there, they tried to surprise UCF, get up to the line of scrimmage quick. If you're going to do that, you better have the advantage with the element of surprise. But see how slow they take to set, to set up? I think everybody in this whole stadium knew they were going to run quarterback sneak. So, so did UCF's defensive line. They stood them up. AJ, you happy with that decision if you're a Maryland fan? Yeah, I go for it regardless. Right there. Yeah, you're, like you're in the dead zone. Don't punt it and try to gain 20 yards in field position. Quarterback keeper, Milton, gets into the secondary. He's across midfield down to the 41, picks up 14 yards on first down. This is the key to this offense. Mackenzie Milton, he's the quarterback, but he's the playmaker. It all revolves around him. Whether it's on the ground like the run we saw just there or through the air, he's got to be the one that infuses this UCF offense with some life. Traquan Smith in motion. Milton looks his way, now goes the other way. The pass is bobbled and dropped. Looking for his tight end, Michael Colombiali. Gotta make that catch for your QB. Even AJ will admit that. No question. <laughs> gotta have these. Gotta have the easy ones, Danny. Yeah. I mean, hit him right between the numbers. Colombiali yeah. looked like he might have been looking to turn the corner. Gotta scare the football first. Milton just won for his last six throwing the football. Down the seam, and that time Kalubiali was turned around. Jermaine Carter, the speedy linebacker we see down with you, in the throw it just enough in the window here. Jermaine Carter does an amazing job of kind of cutting this off. If you see, just he doesn't have to be super tight coverage. Just make it a high throw to where it's not not able to be caught by the tight end there. In the backfield next to Milton. Pass was short of the line to gain. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and a decision. Perfect, though. That was a good play call from Scott Frost and good execution because now they have the opportunity to go for this one on fourth and one. It's a decision they can make. Ideally, you'd like to see the receiver get past the sticks, but that play was not designed to get the first down. It was to get positive yardage to put him in this situation. Speed back, he's got the first down, and then some! Inside the 20 to the 15. 17 yards on fourth and two. Maryland knows when number nine Adrian Killens is in the game, in any kind of fly motion, alarms go off all over the place. The problem is he has so much speed you can't contain him. If you don't set a hard edge right off the beginning, he's going to cut it up and, and gash you. UCF hadn't played in 23 days, starting to get their sea legs under them. But after 15 minutes, it is a lead of three to nothing for Maryland. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Volkswagen. Getting ready to play quarter number two from College Park, Maryland. UCF has the first down, and the ball inside the red zone for the first time. Traquan Smith runs from his receiver spot. Good gain on first down. Antoine Brooks forces him out of bounds. UCF, they scored 61 points in their opener against Florida International, but that was the only game they played, and it was three weeks ago. Trying to figure things out again. A slow first quarter, but now marching. McGowan, it'll bring up third down. With A.J. Hawk and Danny Cannell, I'm Eric Collins. Both teams with huge offensive numbers early in the season, but a whole bunch of nothing really in the first quarter. Three combined points. Third and three. 
This Maryland team has done a good job so far this year holding teams out of the end zone once they're in the red zone here. McGowan, first down. Touchdown! He just got over the end line, an eight-yard scamper, and UCF is on the board. Spread him out to run it. UCF knows they have to have a successful running game to win today. They spread everybody out, opens up running lanes. Maryland's defense doesn't really have a chance. They're all on the perimeter. Three runs in a row. UCF able to punch it in. Matthew Wright comes on to attempt the extra point. And before we have that, we will take a longer look at the touchdown. Today's replay official, Tom Herbert, will get a longer look to make sure that McGowan did get to the end line. McGowan trying to get there. It was getting close. The question is, does his knee or elbow come down? Where's the ball when his elbow was down? Was the ball across the plane is the question mark. And I don't know if you're going to have enough evidence to overturn that. But man, that elbow looks down, but the ball looks like it was over the plane. What do you think, AJ? Yeah, it's a, they called it a touchdown. I don't think there's enough to right. overturn this one. So I think whatever call they would have made, it would have stayed. There's not enough video evidence to change it. Well, since we have uh, the guy who has all the answers, let's check in with him. Mike Pereira standing by in Los Angeles. Mike, your thoughts. With you guys, look at, you know, the wrist is down, um, I think, before the ball breaks the plane. But the wrist, the, the wrist does not put you down. You've got to get to the forearm. And, and it's really close. And I'm with you guys when, you know, you say, man, it's really close. It's that old, to me, ruling on the field stands means whichever way it was called. You stay with it, and I just don't see enough that you can overturn this. Now, how about that? No one agrees with what we think. Uh, the call has been overturned. Mike, thank you so much. The call has been overturned, and the extra point unit is back to the side of the field. It'll be a first down, but it's first down at maybe six inches away. I was going to say, maybe a couple centimeters. That's about as close as you can get. So instead of the touchdown, the ball is spotted at the point blank range for UCF. Let's see if they give it to McGowan again just to give him that touchdown. McGowan's got it, and this one is a no doubt about a touchdown. Almost from a play calling standpoint, you got to give it to McGowan, right? <laughs> Since you yeah. just had one taken away. Exactly. Let him get that stat. Let him get the TD. This Maryland defense was already on the bench sitting down. They, they assumed it was the touchdown. It, it can't be easy to come back and the team is first and 10 from six inches out. <laughs> and you think you're going to stand up for three or four plays from six inches? That's a tough <laughs> task for a defense. Now Matthew Wright comes on. Third year kicker. Trying to give UCF a four point lead. Uh, no worries. So after a whole bunch of nothing really for UCF in the first quarter. They come here in the second quarter with their hair on fire. They lead for the first time. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Discover Card. We treat you like you treat you. And by Ford. Going further so you can. Wonderful part of the world. Not too far away from downtown D.C. And all it has to offer. Not too far away from Baltimore, Maryland. Big city feel. Well, so far, so good for Scott Frost and the UCF Knights. They get on the board a nine play, 55 yard drive, capped off by the first rushing touchdown of the game for Patrick McGowan, second touchdown of his season. And they were committed to the run on that drive. Returnable kick from the seven yard line. Ty Johnson. Johnson breaks that first wall and gets out to the 35 yard line. Return of 29 yards coming up on the State Farm halftime show. Rob Stone and the guys in Los Angeles. Lots to talk about. Busy day around the world of college football. It's good to see, for the most part, everyone playing. Last couple of weeks with hurricanes and just difficult situations. 
games being postponed and canceled and moved around. It's good to get back to some football. Shuffling of the schedules has been nothing short of amazing what these people have done, the NCAA and college football, to, to get these games back. Again, Kasim Hill not in the game. Max Bortenschlager is the quarterback. Bortenschlager hands it off, and Johnson gets back to the line of scrimmage. Guys, in the sense of the Maryland Terrapins, when there's so much excitement about Kasim Hill throwing in a Bortenschlager, how much has that changed the game plan? How much has that changed the mentality and the attitude and the good vibes that have been built up? I think the good news for Maryland is you had the bye week before this one. So ones and twos probably both had a lot of reps. But losing your guy who was the future of this program has got to be emotionally draining. After you lost Tyrell uh, Pigram in week one. Like this is the third quarterback they've had to see. It's only week three of the season. And this, this program has really had trouble keeping quarterbacks healthy. Now look at that on the screen. Since 2015. <laughs> oh, the ball is loose. Picked up deep in the backfield by Harrison, and he just takes a seat. What a tremendous loss. The snap was high, and by the time it's run down, it'll be a loss of 24. When you have a new quarterback in there, just miscommunication, timing, the snap, things just don't go right sometimes. He turns away. QB turns away. If he's already committed to the ball being snapped, you can't turn around. And that's the little things you have to deal with when you're a, a new quarterback, inexperienced. Eric, you just asked about the impact this had on the team. Think about the momentum of this game, how much it has shifted since Kasim Hill has left it. Maryland was driving down the field. Their defense was dominating. All of a sudden, UCF, UCF has completely changed the complexion of this game. Mike Hughes calls for the fair catch and makes it the 42-yard line, a 40-yard punt by Wade Lees. UCF a touchdown last time they had the football. They try and add to that when we return. UCF Knights based in Orlando have had a rough couple of weeks. Hurricane Irma forcing the postponement of one game, cancellation of another. But the players and coaches staying busy working at the second harvest food bank and also assembling and transporting sandbags to assist in the region's hurricane relief efforts. So not a lot of football being played in the last 23 days but still a lot on their plate and a lot happening in the lives of the UCF Knights. They lead Maryland by four. They've got the football. Middle screen is set up. This is Killens, and he is upended after a gain of about five. He stays down on the ground for a moment. So Killens leaves the game. Checking in, Emmanuel Logan Green. Highly thought of true freshman. He wears number seven. Milton. Pass is complete. Otis Anderson close to the first down marker. Otis Anderson, another true freshman on this UCF receiving core that's getting a lot of time. The coaches told us they're going to have their own package for this guy. They can put him in the slot, put him in the backfield. Really can do everything and picked up the offense right away. So credit to him as a young freshman. They got four true freshman wide receivers. Really talented group. And for those of you of a certain age, that Otis Anderson is not related to the Otis Anderson. He used to play for the St. Louis Cardinals and the New York Giants. Passes knocked away. Shane Cockrell, senior from Baltimore, with the pass broken up. Remember, he was actually a quarterback a couple of years ago for Maryland. Really heads up play from Cockrell. It is so frustrating as a quarterback. I would rather get drilled and be able to release the ball and throw it and complete it than have a ball batted down. Cockrell realized he wasn't going to be able to get to Milton. Was able to swat it away. He swatted it without jumping as well. Yeah. That's key. You jump, you get pump fake and run right by. Second down at 10. And it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Cam Stewart. But Tino Ellis got his hand in the mix. Now maybe Maryland trying to get some momentum with their defense. The offense has gone stagnant. Defense an opportunity to step up. Third and long from the, the middle of the field. Another chance where maybe even if you cannot get the first down, try to get seven or eight and create a fourth and short that you can go for.
Anderson splits out wide. Jermaine Carter matched up on Anderson. Milton in trouble. Eyes down the field. Pass is incomplete. Looking for his tight end, Akins, who was drilled by Chandler Burkett. With Melton coming out, thrown against his body, delivers a perfectly thrown ball, almost a circus catch. Tino Ellis, number 17, just coming off the edge, saw it coming. A pretty good hit to knock up the pass. Bent backwards here. Looks like a low back injury, possibly. Milton with the, the dangerous throw across his body. Got his shoulders turned nice, though. I, I was impressed. Yeah. Threw an absolutely perfect ball. He the Maryland throws. defense just much much better uh, job defending. But yeah, he, it seems like that's one of the toughest throws you can have is across your body while moving, running from pressure. He throws a strike. Yeah, he throws well off balance at weird angles on the run. That's what UCF likes about him. He's a gamer. He's a yeah. gunslinger mentality. He's a, I think. Bit, he's a little bit like Baker Mayfield. He really Oklahoma. is. And the team, they feed off that, I feel like. These crazy plays that he can buy time. You know you're always you're always in play if you're a receiver. Louder milk. Off the side of his foot, not the kick that he wanted. Let's see where it's marked. Now the Maryland Terrapins have just been besieged with injuries to their quarterbacks. This is the game against Texas. Tyrell Pickram has up to a great start, but he hurt his knee. He won't return for the rest of the season. He gave way to Kasim Hill, and there was still excitement about what Kasim Hill could do, but this was in our first quarter. And he just took a vicious hit. And Jemias Pittman really caught him at a weird angle. You're almost hoping it was where if he got his wind knocked out of him or it was something where it wasn't as serious to come up and see him favor in that leg. You just hope it's something minor. So Max Bortenschlager, who did start a game a year ago against Nebraska, he throws deep. And his pass is caught by someone. It's UCF who's got it. Intercepted by Kyle Gibson. It was intended for Tavon Jacobs, who may have had it for a moment, but it eventually ends into the arms of Gibson. He ran a little Dino route, trying to get the middle of the field open, and that's an exceptional play from the safety. Kyle Gibson just oh. stealing the rock. He juggled that all the way to the ground, and I don't believe it ever touched the turf. No, just a queen interception where Tavon Jacobs thought he had the catch and he just got snagged from him. Absolutely spectacular play there. With a lot UCF sitting in a deep, soft zone. And that's how you execute when you play zone coverage. So back on the field quickly, after just one play, are the UCF Knights. Milton Ooh. passes complete, but going nowhere is Dredrick Snelson. Just gets hammered. Antoine Brooks. And it's a loss of three. UCF loves throwing those bubble screens on the outside. Get a guy blocked downfield. Maryland all obviously coached up well, starting to recognize some of those. Be interesting to see if UCF makes an adjustment, a tweak here or there, and sets up a fake bubble screen with a throw down the field. I'm sure that's in Scott Frost's back pocket. Milton with five receivers. His pass is high and incomplete. Gabriel Davis. <laughs> Some of this is just ugly football, and I think it has to do with timing. Having all that, that three weeks off, and even for Maryland to some extent, having the bye week before this one. Third and a bunch. Terps bring four. Try to set up a screen, and it's just blown up, red beautifully by that Terrapin defense. Melvin Kane knew exactly what was going to happen. Melvin Kane is not fooled by the offensive lineman giving him a free pass. He comes back. He almost gets an interception here in their own zone. This would have been an amazing play. Regardless, third and 13, defense stands up for Maryland. You're throwing a screen pass as a quarterback. You put that much air under it, that is a scary proposition. For everybody involved, the quarterback, the running back, and the defensive lineman almost made a spectacular play. 
Louder milk. Low line drive kick. DJ Moore. Full head of steam from the 20. And Moore cuts it inside. Moore close to midfield. So it was the defense from Maryland that has gotten the turf energized again. A 47-yard punt, but a 29-yard return. And the Maryland Terrapins, they are set up. 7-3 game here in College Park. Well, a significant development just a moment ago. We went to break and a late flag came in. DJ Durkin, Maryland head coach, was flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct. We're taking a look, trying to figure out what was going on. Let's, while we have a moment, well, after this play, let's check in with Mike Pereira, who is standing by. It's first down and 10, but instead of the ball yeah, on the 48, the ball's on the 33. And Maryland's going to run at Lorenzo Harrison, who gets up most of the penalty yardage. All right, Mike Pereira, did you see anything that we didn't? Right here's DJ Durkin. Well, no, but I... I, I have a feeling that something happened well after this because in college football it's a point of emphasis this year on the coaches that they cannot go on the field to argue a call and like you said it was a very late flag so my assumption is he went on the field to argue and that's what drew the flag. Oh thank you Mike that's that's illuminating. Mike Pereira is a wonderful resource and we'll have him throughout the course of the afternoon as per usual. Well, it didn't look like that was much of a, a speed bump for Maryland. They get the lost yardage in the first two plays. And it's now second down and five as they've crossed midfield. High snap. Horton Schlager gets it out. And another big gainer, Ty Johnson. And Johnson finally pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line by Eric Mitchell. And a flag comes in. A couple of them. I'll tell you what, Eric, what that flag on DJ Durkin did, it really energized this stadium, the sideline of Maryland. Play, personal foul, defense, number 93, 15-yard Tony, first down. Tony Garrod, redshirt senior from Tampa, should have known better. If you look at DJ Durkin, who's absolutely livid on the sideline here, and the whole crowd started, they noticed, and they all just got to their feet, started yelling, went crazy. We finally felt some energy in this stadium since Kasim Hill went down. And I think sometimes they can do that to where it really energizes your team. There's the flag just a moment yeah, after ago. The play is done. <clears throat> Garad getting a little cheap shot in there after the play was over. You got to know when to let up. Well, guys, we aren't too far away from Baltimore, and I know it's a different sport, but uh, Earl Weaver used to do a pretty good job of getting his team and the fans uh, all riled up at the yes, appropriate time. So maybe DJ Durkin pulling something out of uh, the Earl of Baltimore's bag of tricks. Hey, I know when a coach is normally pretty docile and, and uh, consistent, when he goes crazy like that as a player, you love to see it. You love to see your coach have some fight. Another run. Harrison changes gears. Shoots his way down to the 10-yard line. Kyle Gibson the tackle, but 10 more yards. How about the shiftiness from Lorenzo Harrison on the ground? It looked like the defense had him bottled up, bottled up a couple times, and just the ability to juke a couple defenders. Really tough tackles. And he gets low. Second down and one. They call it a nine-yard run. Harrison's still in the game. I don't know if he got the first down marker. Tristan Hill, big sophomore from Lee, Florida, with the tackle. Tristan Hill is a special player. Playing the nose, Jemise Pittman moves out to the four-eye defensive end technique in this 3-4. The coaches couldn't say enough. They knew from day one Tristan Hill needed to be on the field, and he's been a force all day. Forcing an unsportsmanlike conduct on the head coach of Maryland. We don't see that too much. Third and one. Harrison and Johnson in the backfield. And wow, Johnson gets smothered by Gabriel Luyanda. What a, a loss huge, of six. Huge play by UCF and Luyanda coming right off the edge, just shoots the gap. Really gets unaccounted for, which is hard to explain with a run going that way. But not only is it a huge play, but it takes them out of thinking about going for it on a fourth down situation. Would have been a fourth and short. And guys, another flag is down, and UCF seems to think it's against Maryland. 
Okay, there no was foul. no foul for unnecessary roughness, but the Knights thought that there was a foul going against Maryland. This game's getting chippy. Yeah, I it love it. We, you got to love <laughs> the passion these guys have. DJ Durkin literally brought the juice back into this building. Oh, man, I love this. this is, uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun to see how this plays out. If Scott Frost gets an unsportsmanlike, <laughs> then we know something's up. Henry Darmstadter, the transfer from Georgetown, has already made a field goal. This one will be from 35 yards. Bortenschlager, the quarterback, is the holder. And it's wide right. So Bortenschlager, the holder, Darmstadter, the kicker. And it's no good. So Maryland has to be satisfied with the three points they've got on the board. Let's check with Greg Wolf in L.A. for a game break. Eric, thanks. Number one, Al Greg, thank you so, thank you so much. Who's going to stop the Alabama Crimson Tide? Oof. Who's going to, how about just two tests them first? We'll take that first because they are just running over people left and right. New left guard into the game for UCF. Jake Brown comes in for the first time. That's not unexpected. He was supposed to rotate in for a couple of series. First down run for a couple of yards. UCF, the game's only touchdown. It came earlier in the second quarter. Touchdown run, Taj McGowan. Who would have guessed this game would be 7-3 to three deep into the second quarter? The number one and two scoring offenses in the country. They fake to Killens. Milton, tons of time. Hits his tight end, who's got a ton of room. Straight down the middle of the field goes Jordan Franks to the 45. Oh, what a creative play there by Mackenzie Milton. Everything had fallen apart. He had all day to throw the football. And just watch the flip of the wrist as he finds his tight end, Jordan Franks. Look at him, survey in the field, he's all day. And then just a little flip of the wrist leads him away from the defense so Franks can pick up those extra yards after the catch. Again to a tight end. This time it's Kalubiali, and he picks up a good first down gain. Seven yards, Jermaine Carter, the tackle. And three different tight ends play for the Knights, and they're all valuable. Franks. Kalubiali and Akins. Maryland's defense rotating a lot of D linemen in here with this fast tempo UCF has. Killens in motion. They give it to him. Killens, the first down. And could have been a whole bunch more. Tripped up by Darnell Savage. But a good game, and the chains will move. All of a sudden, you get that feeling that UCF is starting to find their rhythm. Going with the tempo, making a few plays, establishing the line of scrimmage much more than they did in the first quarter. Milton's pass, wide open, Kalubiari gets inside the five, 37 yards. What a drive for the UCF Knights. A beautiful play down the field. He sort of walked the in, he yeah, trips exactly. over the turf. It's a shame for him. You have to be. A turf monster got him. You got to be embarrassed and upset at yourself. Yeah, that'll be a rough day in film session on Monday. <laughs> Milton. This give to McGowan. McGowan is their power back they like to use at the goal line. He picks up a pair. It'll bring up second and goal from the three. Let's see if they try to spread him out. Well, again, Maryland's, to run run like Maryland's gonna have to use the timeout. They're not lined up. They have no idea what's going on. UCF lets them off yeah. the hook here. <laughs> Knights trying to take a 14 to three lead. Everybody trying to get their breath on the field right now. McGowan, touchdown UCF. Second time this quarter. The Taj McGowan has ran it in. And how about that? The visitors from Orlando flexing their muscle here in the second quarter. Taj McGowan here. Watch this patience he has to let the blocks happen. You set up the defenders behind your offensive lineman, let the blocks happen, and then you put your foot in the ground, get on field, touchdown. 
No worries on the extra point for Matthew Wright. And it's a touchdown and the extra point for the UCF Knights' biggest play of the drive. Michael Kalubiali. Oh, inches away from the touchdown himself. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Volkswagen. Maryland Stadium, College Park, Maryland. And the visitors, led by Taj McGowan, on top of the Terrapins, 14-3. Seven-play, 80-yard drive. Took less than three minutes to put seven on the board. Second, second quarter touchdown for McGowan. And after a rough three weeks and kind of an interesting couple of days for Scott Frost, his team is starting to play. Jacobs starts from the three. And he is hammered. Luyanda with that special teams tackle. Take a look at the winning duo sponsored by Volkswagen. Why settle for an SUV when you can have an SUVW? It's Kalubiali with a nice gainer and then the fall. But that just really set up McGowan. And now in that film session, you can really laugh about it because it didn't cost you any points. Your boys will be able to rag on you a little bit. And he's going to want that one back. That's one tonight when he's trying to go to sleep. He'll be like, man, I was that close to having a touchdown. Mackenzie Milton had a, had a yeah, touchdown yeah, pass taken exactly. away as well. <laughs> so the Terrapins, led by Bortenschlager, are not going anywhere, guys. What's a good way to get Bortenschlager and this offense going? They're trying to give him easy throws like that one, but UCF knows it. They're starting to read routes, get very aggressive that time. Bam Moore came up, almost ran the route, took it from the receiver. Like, look at what UCF did. They started running the football, which really opened up the entire offense. That's what I think Maryland has to do to take some of the load off Bordenschlager. They fake the run, and they get it out to Moore in space. Oh. DJ Moore is crunched by a pair of DBs. Those little play-action passes aren't as effective if you're not able to run the football. And Mike Hughes... First year corner is down on a knee. Maryland hasn't been able to win the line of scrimmage. They've tried Ooh. to run. UCF has, has been stout up front all day with the big fourth down stop early in the game. Maryland's going to have to keep going to it and hopefully they can break a few and wear this UCF defense down. So Mike Hughes is being slowly led off the field, one of the corners. He's replaced by number 46, Chris Johnson. So Johnson is the new quarterback in the game. Bottom of your screen in 46. Wartenschlager looking that way. Oh, how about that? Johnson is up to the task, but there is a flag. There is a flag in the direction of Chris Johnson, who's been in the game for all of six seconds. Johnson was draped all over him. <laughs> Pass interference, defense, number 46, automatic first down. They put him in man coverage on that third down play, and Bordenschlager wisely challenged him. But you can see a lot of hand, a lot of jersey. Pretty easy call for the officials to make. It's tough to come in as the boundary corner, <laughs> yeah. fresh off the bench, manned up, play one. So fresh in and outs for Maryland, and they need to stay on this field. They don't want to give it back to UCF the way that the Knights are playing offense. UCF doing a good job on defense disguising their looks. They're waiting for Maryland to make a check before they get into their final look. Bortenschlager. Fastball is knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. Jamias Pittman. He's not the tallest lineman they've got, only 6'1". But that pass found him in the forearm. I'll tell you, that front wall for UCF, they go 319, 330, and 310. And they move really well, which is probably the most impressive. Second and 10. Johnson, nothing there. It'll bring up third down and 10. If UCF continues to win the battle in the trenches, I don't know what this Maryland offense can do. You're going to hope 
you find a mistake that this secondary makes with UCF, but they had no success running the ball thus far. Especially when you have a new quarterback coming the game, the run game would really help him out. That's great news. Mike Hughes, number 19, back on the field. Boundary corner had been out for the last couple of plays. Apparently, he's okay. Maryland's not converted on third down. They're 0 for 6 in these situations. Pressure is picked up. Bortenschlager's pass. Now well, that's some miscommunication. He was trying to get it to DJ Moore, but Moore wasn't in the spot where the pass went. It may go overlooked here. Watch the block on Shaquem Griffin right there. We missed a little bit of it, but man, Shaquem Griffin behind his pads. Ty Johnson stands up and protects his quarterback. Love seeing a back step in there and give your quarterback some good pass protection. Unfortunately for Maryland, could not convert on it. Wade Lee's to punt it away. Mike Hughes back deep. Hughes is a good returner. Chooses the fair catch. 43-yard punt, no return. Now start your Sunday with Fox NFL kickoff at 11 a.m. Eastern, followed by Fox NFL Sunday at noon. Then the Giants are going to battle the Eagles or the Seahawks facing the Titans. Check your local listings. How about this? We've been talking all day long about Shaquem Griffin, the linebacker uh, for the UCF Knights. His twin brother, Shaquille Griffin, plays for the Seahawks. His parents are in the stands today. After the game, they're going to, I'm not sure if they're driving or they're flying, but they're going to find their way to Nashville as the Seahawks taking on the Titans. So they're going to see both sons. How cool would that be as a parent? Same weekend. How cool would that be? I guess it's not that unique. The Griffins have made it to every single game that their sons have played over the years. Talking about peewee football. It's awesome. Middle school, high school, college, and now the NFL. And you know what? It's no surprise when you talk to Shaquem what an impressive young man he is. Obviously raised by some really strong parents. Knights have the football and the nominal gain on first down. Taj McGowan. Short game. Let's see how aggressive the Knights will be. We're under two minutes to play here in the second quarter. And we've got a stoppage. There wasn't a flag on the field. Please set the game clock to one minute and 33 seconds, please. Oh, that's a significant amount yeah. of time. <laughs> There's a lot of time that just came off. Interesting to see how aggressive UCF gets here. The 14-3 lead really in control of this game. So that announcement was just uh, conveyed to the people here in the stands. Time is being kept on the field. With a sundial, maybe at this pace. <laughs> I mean. Second down and nine. And the quarterback, Milton, keeps the clock moving. Uh, let's see what they do here. Are they, are they going to hustle back to the line of scrimmage and try to steal some points? If there's a minute 30 left, you would sense there's a sense of urgency from this team on this third down. But as you wonder if maybe Scott Frost is managing this game clock a little bit differently, knowing that Maryland has Bortenschlager in a quarterback as opposed to Kasim Hill. I would, wouldn't surprise me one bit. And being in complete control of this game to this point. Now the clock in the stadium is not running. That's why ours is not running at the bottom of your screen. But we're underneath a minute now. Well, see, that's, that's what I was surprised that DJ Time Durkin out. wasn't using a timeout because if you're sensing UCF is getting conservative, you need to capitalize that and try to get the ball back and get your offense to get the ball and get some point, something going before you go into halftime. Yeah, well, the announcement hasn't been made as to how much time is exactly left, but it's considerably less than a minute 53. I think we're underneath 60 seconds now, but in a matter of moments, you would assume that we'll be told exactly how much time there is. But with, Maryland, sidelines, no. but with Maryland being able to you know, call a timeout there. 43 seconds left in the half. There's 43. 43 seconds, so pay no attention to what it says on the scoreboard. Uh, we're at 43 seconds. What is accurate is the amount of timeouts. You can see underneath the school name for both, both UCF and Maryland. They both have uh, two small horizontal lines that indicates how many timeouts. So both 
UCF and Maryland. Two timeouts with 43 seconds remaining in our first half. Now, Danny, does, if you're Scott Frost, does your play call change on third down now that you've seen DJ Durkin take this timeout? Obviously, he wants to find a way to steal some points going into half. I think it might. I think this is this is actually good for Scott Frost to be able to talk to his quarterback, Mackenzie Milton, and be able to discuss, hey, if we give you a pass play, which is very much in the air, we'll see how much he trusts him. But if we give you a pass play, if it's wide open, hit it. If it's not, don't do anything stupid. Just It's okay to take a sack, keep the clock running, make them use another timeout. Well, while we have just a moment, we alluded to the fact it's been an interesting couple of days for that man, middle of your screen, Scott Frost, what we were talking about. His alma mater, of course, is Nebraska, legend out there. Uh, Nebraska earlier this week relieving their athletic director, Sean Eichhorst, of, the, Eichhorst of his duties. Generally in the football world, ADs and head football coaches are a tandem. So there is some wonder as to what could be the future of a really good man and a great coach in Mike Riley, the current head coach with the Nebraska Cornhuskers. All right, back to action. 43 seconds remaining in the second quarter, and they keep it on the ground. And the Knights are going to have to punt the football. Now Trey Clark Smith was looking for something, nothing to develop. And DJ Durkin was all over it. Now they can go for a punt block. They can do a lot. It just opens up a lot more for Maryland to try to get something going before the half. So Maryland uses their second timeout. Now stick around. State Farm halftime report when we get to the end of our second quarter. Guys out in Los Angeles chomping at the bit to talk about a busy day in the world of college football. This has not been the game we expected to see, but maybe it's because the players we expected to see haven't played a whole lot. Injuries have affected both teams. And the future of both these teams' seasons is up in the air now. Kasim Hill came in, the, the highly touted true freshman, played really, really well, and he gets hurt. Where does this Maryland team go from here? Let's see if Maryland challenges this punt. The offense stuck in neutral. Maybe they can force something on special teams. No, they don't come after it. There's a flag down. Moore fields at the 31. Heads to the sideline. And he crosses the 50, but we'll have to figure out the penalty. And instead of the block, set up the return, and they got great field position. Only need about 15 or 20 yards to get a field goal. Depending on the penalty. Been a busy first half for Tom LaPenta and his crew. There are two line ball fouls on the play. Offside, receiving team number 84, holding, kicking team number 80. Fouls offset, replay, fourth down. Okay, so well, we'll have more of the clock winding down. If you ever wanted to know what it was like watching a football game, AJ Hawk, back in the 70s, this is similar to it. You don't have the score at all times on the bottom <laughs> of your screen. Uh, the score. The reason for that is that the game scoreboard is not operational, and so the score or at the time is being kept on the field. It's, by really, the it's really tough on the quarterbacks and, and everybody trying to execute before the half, trying to know what you're working with. You know, do you use your timeout? How much time do you have to get up to the line of scrimmage? It's really tricky. I think that's one thing teams usually do not simulate in practice. No, hey, the, the clock's down, guys. Maybe after this, Scott Frost and DJ Durkin <laughs> will. We don't know. Everyone's in uh, disarray. What do we do? Maybe it's something they'll add into those Thursday practices or Friday walkthroughs. And, it, and their sec every second is so important. You need to know. Like, the head official or somebody needs to be counting for you when there's 30 seconds, maybe every five seconds, but somehow alerting everybody to the time that's remaining. I mean, what if this happens deep into the fourth quarter and the game is on the line that you have one guy yeah. that knows exactly how much time is left on the clock, and that is the official. Yeah, the most nervous person in College Park, Maryland right now is the scoreboard operator who's in charge of figuring out how to get that clock working again. Better call somebody, get a generator in here. <laughs> so, it's UCF that calls timeout. Trying to get situated. Fourth down and seven. Punt unit comes on again. 
Loudermick has been busy. Let's see if they switch it up. Let's see if they come after him this time. Last time they set up the return. Doesn't look like it. We huh? believe there's about 22 seconds remaining in the first half. More dangerous catch on that punt. But it was a short punt, only 32 yards, and because he aggressively caught it, that saves a bounce and a roll, Huge. and maybe 10, 15 yards. So even though it was a little bit risky, turns out to be a great play by DJ Moore. They must have a lot of trust in DJ Moore to go up and make those tough catches. The risk reward there is usually not worth it. If, we, if you had a young, inexperienced returner, but DJ Moore has been around. The coaches obviously give him a lot of freedom when it comes to fielding punts. Uh, we now believe there's 18 seconds remaining. Moore could have easily saved his team 20 yards in field position there by making that aggressive catch. Yeah. Maryland with one timeout remaining. We believe 18 seconds remaining in the half. Fortin Schlager, good pocket to throw from. And the pass is incomplete looking for Jacobs. So I'm going to guess about 12 seconds left. <laughs> to just kind of go by the average time of play. I think it's important for Maryland to realize with the timeout in their back pocket, you don't have to work the outside of the field. You can work the middle of the field, hustle up, get a timeout, and get your field goal team on there. Four-man rush. Morton Schlager, flag is down in the backfield. He's crossed the line of scrimmage, and he does get out of bounds to stop the clock. Clock will stop with the revealing of the penalty. This could be a hold here in the tackle. Shaquem Griffin with a great move, a speed rush around the edge, as Danny spoke about earlier. He's run up Holding field. offense, number 58, 10-yard penalty, yep. second down. Three Damian seconds Prince. left in the half. That's right, the right tackle here. <laughs> Watch Shaquem Griffin coming over here on his right side. Look at him dip. <laughs> he rips. Prince just grabs and holds on. See, that's as good as a sack there for Shaquem Griffin. Now, obviously, it doesn't go down in the books as a stack, but that's as good as a sack. Now we believe there's only three seconds remaining in the half, and Maryland's going to call off the dogs. Fort Schlager just takes an E, and that'll be the final play of our first half. And it is not the first half that the locals expected. Scott Frost and the UCF Knights, they roll to College Park with a 14-3 lead at the half. Now let's send you to Rob Stone in Los Angeles. All right, gents, we welcome you to the State Farm FS1 College Football Halftime Show. Glad you're with us. Rob Stone, Robert Smith, Matt Liner. Coach Dave Wanstat with you. First game in 23 days for UCF, and they are halfway in this thing from a 2-0 and start this season. One of the reasons they're in position to get to 2-0 and is their defense, and that's how we start our State Farm most valuable possession. Robert? Well, they're really just doing everything right defensively. Here you can see a little bit of penetration, movement along that defensive line, doing a nice job containing guys just in the right place throughout that first half. Here you can see a little bit of read and react coming up, breaking on the ball nicely. You can tell they haven't played a game in 21 days. They've been doing a lot of film study. Obviously, you're playing with a backup quarterback to a backup quarterback, but give this UCF defense a lot of credit, playing a great first half. They, they did a great job, and you talk about the quarterback, Max Bortenschlager, essentially the third-string quarterback going into the season. He's not the athlete the other two guys were, Piggy and Kasim Hill, so they're not. he's not affecting this defense with his legs. So now UCF can stack the box, put seven, eight defenders in there, he made a couple decent throws, but you see here, anytime you're a backup quarterback, you don't get the reps in practice, the timing with the center and the offensive line. And we saw that bad snap. And right here, the receiver just has to come down with the football. But if I'm offensive coordinator Walt Bell and I'm, in, I'm going into halftime right now and I'm going to sit down with my quarterback and I'm going to tell him two things. One, I'm going to tell him, don't try and do too much. You have DJ Moore and you have Ty Johnson. You have good players around you. And the second thing is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to go through the game plan. I'm going to say, listen, Max, what are you comfortable throwing? What are your top five to ten football plays that you feel you could throw in your sleep? And they're going to have to execute that way, and defensively they're just going to have to uh, keep them in the game. Yep. Borton Schlager, which is fun to say, I have to admit, uh, five of nine, 31 yards, one interception. He did 
played twice last season, got one start, so he has limited yeah. experience. Offense has really been non-existent, Coach. 0 for 6 on third down, 86 total yards for Maryland. Maryland. If you're DJ Durkin, you're in that locker room right now, and you, you've seen another quarterback go down, you see you're trailing at home after a great start, which includes that road win at right. Texas. How are you addressing yeah, your troops? Yeah, you know, they've, they've probably been reading the clippings a little bit. I mean, because they were leading the Big Ten in scoring, leading the Big Ten in rushing. This would be a halftime where I would not break up, you know, offense, defense, special teams. I would get everybody together initially, and right from the get-go, I would talk and, and just really, Matt mentioned Ty Johnson, and say, hey, guy, I would challenge the offensive line. You know, you got to show confidence, but you got to be realistic. Do, you know, does anybody here not think we can go out there and run the ball? Exactly we right. were averaging over 300 yards a game. And then we talked about DJ Moore, whatever we can do to get him the ball. And defensively, I would get with my defensive coordinator and say, you know what, we're going to have to pressure a little bit more the second half. We're going to have to try to create something to help our offense. And I would get our special teams guys together, and every coach works on it all year and say, Men, all the fakes are hot. Fake field goal, <laughs> fake punt. It's, it's all on the board right now. Like, get ready. Here we come. And I'd do something to try to steal possession. Everything's hot. I like yeah. that. I'm excited. You got me fired up for the second half, Pumpkin Coach. Pumpkin lattes are hot. Kind of ability, yes. Second game of our FS1 triple header. Number three, Oklahoma on the road in Waco. That one at 6.30 Eastern. Well, rivalry game, Notre Dame in East Lansing taking on Sparty here on Fox at 8. And then Pac-12 after dark, number 7, Washington taking on Colorado. Let's go back, Coach, to Michigan. Spate out for now, at least, getting uh, attention in the locker room. A corn in your Slightly familiar with the Yeah, Aquan. he's a Pennsylvania. In fact, his uncle and I played together at Pitt. You know, you, you got to go back to training camp. I mean, this was a battle. This mm -hmm. is a guy that obviously went to Houston. He transferred. So he's an older player. He's a smart guy. You know, it, the, the talk out of the camp up there is he's a little bit more athletic than Spate. You know, Spate was a little more accurate passer. But they both know the offense. And it was a battle back and forth in training camp. So I don't think they're going to miss much. This may create that team to a little sense of urgency. You know what I mean? Now, all of a sudden, somebody else needs to step up. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go man. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, they've, they've already put up 40 yards on this drive, which is yeah. almost four times more than they had in the game, and they are getting O'Corn onto the edges. Mm -hmm. Plus, Jim Harbaugh, great quarterback teacher. Mm -hmm. This kid will be ready to play. Michigan has a bye next week, and then they take on Sparty. Sparty taking on Notre Dame later today. Michigan and Purdue live right now on Fox. But after the break, we get you back out to Maryland and the Terps with some work to do. They're down 11 at the break. bit of a shocker the UCF Knights who haven't played since August 31st they rust the uh, knocked the rust off and they've got a 14 to 3 lead with AJ Hawk and Danny Cannell and Merrick Collins both teams with great offenses before today's game but not so much today for varying reasons yeah Taj McGowan has really been the, the bell cow for this UCF offense two touchdowns already running with, with a lot of patience puts his foot in the ground gets on field you have to uh, love what you see they're going to try to continue that in the second half the difference in this game has been UCF's ability to get something on the ground hasn't been much, but they're just under 100 yards rushing. On the flip side, Maryland has struggled to get anything going. And that's going to be the difference in this game. When you lose your quarterback, Kasim Hill, early in this game, the way Maryland did, you've got to do something to take pressure off of Max Bordenschlager. And I would look to their run game to do that. They need some offense, and they need it quick. A couple of these stats there for Maryland. You see less than 90 yards of total offense and 0 for 6. Converting third downs. Those need to change. Maryland starts with the football to begin this third quarter. And it's going to be decent starting field position. It's going to be first and 10 at the 30 after the kickoff return by Ty Johnson. Well, glad you're with us. This is the second consecutive year that UCF and Maryland have played. Last year down in Orlando, Maryland needed double overtime to win over the Knights. This was the injury to Kasim Hill happened early in that first quarter. Really took a lot of wind out of Maryland's sails. They were moving the ball pretty well on the offensive side of the ball. 
when he went down it really slowed down this offense. Max Bortenschlager did start a game a year ago as a freshman. And that was a pass just trying to be thrown away and it was almost picked off. Dangerous Titus Davis ranging far was out of bounds. This Maryland offense just has to get something, just one big play to maybe grab some momentum. You can feel in the air, it's just the, the hopes have been dashed from the fans to the sidelines of this Maryland team. They were dancing earlier, excited. They just need something to get them going. Fake the inside handoff. Bortenschlager, pocket collapses, he goes down. Tony Garan with the sack. That's the first sack so far for UCF. Much different quarterback back there in Bortenschlager than Kasim Hills. The offensive line has to pick it up. But also, Bortenschlager has to know that internal clock, he cannot hang on to the football that long. You've got to throw it away or you've got to escape the pocket and get some positive yards, or else you're going to find yourself in these third and long situations, which is one of the big reasons Maryland is 0 for third down on the game. Third and 13. This one won't be easy. Four man rush. And again, Borton Schlager goes down. This time it's Jemias Pittman. It's officially a gain of a yard, so it's not a sack. But the punt unit will have to come on. Jemias Pittman just winning the one on one battle here. We said these big guys can run, they can kind of do it all. And I, I think UCF. They smell blood right now and they're going for it. And they've got a dangerous returner, Mike Hughes. Late fair catch call for it. Now everyone for the Knights just is going to get away, and that's going to allow Wade Lees to add to his punting average. That is a 56 yard punt after the roll. So UCF's going to have the football. A couple of touchdowns, both of them on the ground. Mackenzie Milton. Completing 50% of his passes in the first 30 minutes. He's not exactly lighting it up for UCF, but he's made a couple plays. And his ability to run on the outside, keep some of those defensive ends honest, has allowed that run game to open up. Remember, Jawan Hamilton expect to get the lion's share of the carries. Injured the very first series of the game, hadn't played. So it's been a lot of this man, Taj McGowan. Uh, McGowan, guys, in the first game of the year back against Florida International, carried the ball eight times for six total yards. He actually averaged less than a yard per carry. And here in this game tonight, this afternoon, he's the only guy who scored a touchdown. He's got a pair of them. Inside handoff, Anderson, true freshman, Jitterbug, picks up a couple of yards. It's going to bring up third down. Third down and short, Chandler Burkett with the tackle. This Maryland defense got to take some chances here soon. Try to create a turnover, do something to flip this momentum and get your team some good field position. Your offense has been struggling all day. Design quarterback run and Milton has a first down and a chance. What kind of speed do you got? Milton still inbounds. Down to the 20. Darnell Savage saves the touchdown, but a huge gainer for the sophomore. First of all, it's third down and three, so your playbook opens up a lot better than it did for Maryland. Third and 13, the play before. Middle of the field opens wide open. And Mackenzie Milton, once he gets that second level, some jets towards the end there. Set up a block, slow down, let a blocker get out in front of him. Traquan Smith, his stud receiver, blocking for him 30 yards down the field. No block, no rock, right? He's out there. Living up to the motto. That's the clinic tape the coaches are going to play for their, their young guys. Now, M Mackenzie Milton has to be tired right now, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. I would it's, assume they're going to hand the gassed. ball off here. And they do. Killens trying to stretch it out. Doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Milton has that long run. Obviously, you're winded naturally from having that, but then the adrenaline dump after the play, you, you have to be pretty excited. All of that comes up now that we see him down the field tying his shoe at the same time. Both of them. Yes. I, I would imagine I'd be panicking a little bit. If my shoes ever came untied on the field. He's looking for a third shoe just to give a little bit more time. 
it's Nelson, the man in motion. Milton wants to throw, looking for Snelson, who is bodied up, and a flag comes down. Tino Ellis got very handsy on that coverage. Pass interference, defense. Tino Ellis down here. Pass I'm interference. First down. This UCF offense goes three by one formation. When you're the boundary corner away from the three man side, all of the pressure is on you. You're pretty much manned up without really any help over the top. And when you have that situation as a quarterback and the corner is not looking at the quarterback, the only thing he's looking at is a receiver, you can throw that as a quarterback. Just throw it in the area, give your receiver a chance, and a lot of times you'll get that call. Cordarian Richardson into the game for the first time. He wears number 29 in the backfield. They give it to Richardson, and the big thumper gets to the three. Brett Kalka with the tackle. Richardson is 248 pounds. He is a true freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee. He is by far the largest back available for UCF. Again, Richardson trying to push that wall. And guys, all of a sudden, this is a almost crucial third down for Maryland with a, a quarterback struggling to fall down a whole bunch more would be an issue. Yeah, you can't you can't afford personal foul, face mask, defense, number 18. Oh. Happens to the goal. Shane Cockrell. This can be that much more of a challenge now. See in the middle of that pile. Shane Cockle yeah. right here grabs the face mask. Is he trying to take off his helmet? <laughs> if you're going to do it, you might as well go all the way. <laughs> so it's first and goal inside the one. And before the ball snaps, the flags. Ball start. Offense. Number 77. Five yard penalty, first down. Jake Brown, who didn't start, but who's got a bunch of playing time, called for that foul. Glass half full outlook for UCF. They've got more room to operate. They get the look they want, and they get positive numbers in the box. Look to him to look for UCF to give it to Richardson again. Milton, little pop pass. That'll be a touchdown. The tight end, Jordan Aikens. Third touchdown of the afternoon for UCF, and they've got their largest lead. We talk about the importance of the run game, establishing the run, which UCF has done. That opens up so much more. Here's your big tight end. Watch him just hesitate for a second, gets lost in the wash, and that is as easy as it gets. Just a little pop pass over the line of scrimmage. Whoever is accounted for Aikens, he feigns like he's run blocking and yep. just slips in behind the defenders. Extra point is perfect. And DJ Durkin's Maryland Terrapins are in trouble. It is a 21 to three lead. The UCF Knights all over Maryland. FS1 College Football is sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. And a lot of cranes are on this campus, and that's a, a, a really nice new building. That's a Cold Field House, which is historic. Got a lot of different things happening in there over the years. That is a new state-of-the-art football practice facility, something that the Terrapins are exceedingly proud about. Tavon Jacobs, that was a disaster from the get-go. Couldn't pick up the greasy football finally did and it was dropped inside the 10 so a bad situation getting worse for the locals this is going to be terrible starting field position for the terrapins during the drone holding receiving team oh, number man. 43 now this is the goal first down and this is where dj durkin and this is where when you don't have a quarterback who's a leader somebody to kind of take everybody you know, by the helmet and look at him and say, hey, we've got to snap out of this funk before this game gets sideways. And this is Maryland's last tune-up before Big Ten play. They're on the road at Minnesota next weekend. Well, tonight, catch a full slate of college football and Fox and FS1. Coming up next at 6.30 Eastern on FS1, you got the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners taking on Baylor, followed with 
Notre Dame and Michigan State at 8 Eastern on Fox. Then at 10, 7th-ranked Washington Huskies battling Colorado on FS1. College football tonight on Fox and FS1, where every game is everything. And again, tough sledding for Ty Johnson. A.J. Hawk is one of the best defenders that Ohio State has ever had. When you played a quarterback that has not shown an ability to beat you, how did that change your life as a linebacker? Well, the play calling obviously will be more aggressive usually from the coordinator, but you look at it, you're going to have many more opportunities for turnovers, big plays as a defense to really change the game. Quick pitch and catch, and it's complete. So finally something heading in the right direction for the Maryland Terrapins. They'll have a first down. On the catch made by Bay. If you're the, the UCF defense there, you'll let, you can let him have that pass. You don't care too much about that. You're not too worried. He's not going to beat you making those throws all day. And he's almost buying time. And as a defense for UCF, you feel like you can force him into a mistake eventually. Johnson makes the first man miss. Johnson, world class speed, gets out across the 30. Finally. Maryland starting to show a little bit. Kyle Gibson the tackle, but a 13-yard gain. Remember, this is a Maryland team that scored 51 points at Texas and then 63 points in their second game against Towson. Horton Schlager. Not a bad gain on first down. That's You'll take good that. play. Absolutely. You'll take that. Keep it in a second down and short. You don't take the sack. Maryland looking to establish the run game. They have to do that in order to climb back in this game. It's really hard as a play caller when you look up and you're down 21 3, but you have to stay committed at plenty of time. Harrison dropped right at the line of scrimmage. Shaquan Burkett. A lot of team speed on this UFC UCF defense. You watch Burkett come in here and make that play. Maryland has not converted a third down today. We're almost halfway through the third quarter. Line to get to the 40. Borton Schlager had a couple of Terps in the vicinity, but neither can catch up with it. It's fourth down. Now that was a missed opportunity for Maryland. UCF brought the, brought the blitz, and Maryland did a really good job picking it up. And there were some opportunities down the field. I felt like Borton Schlager just got kind of zoned in on one receiver, just kind of locked into one guy. If he's not there, get through your progression, find somebody else, and end up forcing a pass that wasn't there. Again, limited playing time, younger quarterback, part of the learning process. Hughes, fair catch made at the 27-yard line. Well, we are just outside the Beltway. Wonderful place to be in the fall. Terps in trouble, though, against UCF. UCF leading against the Maryland Terrapins, 21 to three. Scott Frost team with the football as well. Talk about points. Obviously, small sample size. UCF with just one prior game, but they put 61 points on the board against FIU. DJ Durkins, Terrapins averaging 57 through two games. UCF not embarrassing themselves with 21 points, but Maryland, those three points, not at all. What the fans here at Maryland Stadium were expecting. Killens is tackled close to the line of scrimmage. It'll be a pickup of a yard. Of course, Maryland also didn't anticipate their quarterback being knocked out in the first quarter. It's got a lot to do with whether their offense has struggled today. But you have to find a way to overcome. You got to have the defense step up and play better. Plays other players in the field have to step up. It hasn't been the case so far in this game, and UCF has capitalized on it. It's going to be interesting to see the tempo that UCF offense will yeah. keep now with the lead. Milton gets it to his man, Snelson, out in space. 
And he's tackled after a gain of five. It'll bring him third down. Yeah, I was curious, guys. We hear all the time about UCF fast, about the pace they want to play. Your thoughts on the decisions pace-wise so far through the first two and a half quarters by UCF? I think it's been pretty controlled. I actually was expecting them to go a little bit faster. They're getting them to the line of scrimmage with a pretty good sense of urgency, but I haven't seen Maryland be shocked by anything defensively. Mackenzie Milton lobs it up and it is incomplete looking for Killens out of the backfield. There is no penalty flags on the field so that looks like it's going to be three and out. Shane Cockrell the linebacker in coverage here on his own. Watch him not panic at the top of the route go through the defenders hands to create the PBU forcing the punt. For UCF, that's a big stop by this Maryland D. Now, let's see if they can get something going on this return with DJ Moore. That's what they need. I mean, if they need a spark, it might have to come in the special teams, the way the offense has struggled. Mac Loudermilk. DJ Moore has oh. to lift the right leg out of the way. That almost hit him. That would have been a disaster. It's a punt of 49 yards when you factor in the roll. Maryland, they need something to happen. Is this the time that Ty Johnson comes alive? We'll see. UCF Knights rolling into College Park, Maryland. They've got an 18-point lead, but they're on defense right now. Ty Johnson, he was a huge force. First couple of games, averaging 50 yards per carry 256 yards and 17 rushes but not so much today tough sledding just a, a pedestrian four yards per carry Max Portenschlager he hands it off this is Johnson and again we've seen that script before he loses yards Tristan Hill he is like a panther at 330 pounds blows that one up for a loss of seven this UCF defense is just consistently dominating the line of scrimmage. At some point, Maryland's going to have to abandon the run game. Play action. Borton Schlager on second down of a bunch. Wants a bunch. And there's a ton of contact. DJ Moore was accosted. I don't think he could have caught that pass. But he just had no chance to find out if Brandon Moore and him were bumping back and forth. In some of these situations, if you're Brandon Moore worried about getting beat for a touchdown, that is way better than giving up an 80 yard bomb. You'll take the That's penalty. Defense, defense, number 20, automatic first down. I always thought it's uh, interesting when you've got a quarterback and your nickname is Bam. I choose if you're a middle linebacker. He better be good in run support. <laughs> and DJ Moore, who they were targeting, also a guy who's been a go to for Maryland's offense on the season, has been pretty much held in check today. Just saw Jemias Pittman leave the field gingerly. He's replaced by Joey Connors on that defensive wall for UCF. Borton Schlager again looking deep, and the pass is too high, but a flag again as UCF tries to contain DJ Moore. Holding defense number 20, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, guys, I've seen a lot of football. I don't think I've ever seen the same player get penalized three straight plays. What so, are the odds here? So we've got a little something here. If you noticed as well, Bam Moore's coach was, his defensive backs coach was on the field instantly reprimanding him for that holding call. Back to back penalties on Brandon Moore, and this one relatively obvious. Moore still matched up one on one with the other Moore, Brandon Moore and DJ Moore, top of your screen. 
Harrison struggles to pick up a couple. And in the closest uh, to Harrison would be Brandon Morrison's credit with the tackle. There's that run support we talked about. Played off the block and made it happen. Redeemed himself. Now if you're Borden Slogger, you think you're going to go right after him again. Put the ball in the air to DJ Moore. Oh, every time. Let him try to make those 50-50 plays. Chances are he's going to come down with it or get another penalty. Borton Schlager dumps it out to Harrison. Caught that before it hit the turf. Gets out to the 40. And it'll bring up third down. And medium, Pat Jasinski, who's been busy with the tackle. Man, Maryland just, they look a little lethargic. It's just they can't get anything going. Just the way their body language, they're waiting around. And this is a tempo team as well. I'd like to see them push the tempo, go a little bit faster. This is a big third down. They are desperate to get a third down conversion. Third down and six. This has been a troubled spot for Maryland. Borton Schlager, four man rush. That'll be complete. First down. First time that Maryland has converted on third down all afternoon long. He hits Ty Johnson. Does Max Borton Schlager, and it's a gain of 18. Bortenschlager surveying the field is able to get to his check down who got lost by the defense which allowed him to get a lot of yards after the catch. If you can find your check down it's such a good outlet for a quarterback especially with the shiftiness of these backs that Maryland has really tough for the linebackers to come up and make a clean tackle. Jake Funk in the game. Wraparound handoff to Johnson. Ty Johnson flagged down and he's tackled after a gain of two. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 28, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Sean Burgess Becker trying to make the tackle on Johnson. Pretty easy call for the officials to make. Burgess Becker, the former Alabama product, stepping in, you're right, just trying to make the tackle too high. That tackle already with the angle he took, he had to go low if he wanted a chance to get him to the ground. This Maryland offense has been trying to kind of pick the tempo up, but it's almost like with the QB's inexperience, they cannot seem to get it going. Portschlager keeps to the 20. When do you start to worry about the clock, Danny? Down 21-3? Not yet. There's still plenty of time. That's the thing. Like, I would like to see them play with more, more urgency just to get the defense on their heels a little bit. I mean, UCF's out there waiting. They're used to going against an up-tempo team. They're out there getting checks, disguising defenses. I like just see them pressure them more. Borton Schlager, safety valve, Jake Funk can't make the play coming out of the backfield. The other thing you're not too stressed about either if you're Maryland, and other than watching your offense's performances, but you do have big play potential, guys on the outside like DJ Moore, where, you know, you might be kind of struggling to get things going. It just takes one big play. Even the fans, I mean, the UCF yeah. section is, is that louder. amazing. Yeah. Ninth play of the drive. Third and five. Borton Schlager got hit. Makes the play to Moore. Touchdown, Maryland. Empty formation. Nobody in the backfield. Who do you go to? DJ Moore, that's what Kasim Hill would do. Borton Slaughter with a great decision here. Also with that empty backfield, UCF checks to the blitz. And what a great job by Borton Slaughter hanging in there, realizing I got pressure coming right at me. If I can just buy enough time to flip this over the middle, my receiver can make a play, and that's exactly what happened. So all of a sudden, Maryland's infused with some energy, which they desperately needed. Henry Darmstadter set a Maryland record with nine made extra points two weeks ago. 
makes this one easily. DJ Moore, his third receiving touchdown of the year. We got a ball game again. UCF still leading, but Maryland their first touchdown, and it came on a Vortenschlager to Moore pass. And the pressure UCF had right in Vortenschlager's face, but every quarterback at some time got to hang in there, buy time, and don't let it affect the throw. And it's a big play in this game because that 21 3 cut to 21 10. Now all of a sudden the pressure's on UCF. They have to close this game. Has to go a long ways for the confidence of Borden Schlager yep. to stand in there and make that throw, yeah. staring down the barrel of the, the hit from Burkett. Mike Hughes bobbles, picks it up, picked it up on the run, and gets out to the 25 yard line. Let's check in with Greg Wolf in LA for a game break. Eric, thanks. Over on Fox number eight, Michigan has gone to their backup quarterback, John O'Corn, against Purdue, who led them to a touchdown in his first series, but the Boilers answer. Elijah Sindelar to Bryson Hopkins for a 10-yard score. They've added a field goal since. Purdue leads 10-7 in the second. Back to you. Greg, thank you so much. That's interesting. Purdue obviously just in a terrible shape last couple of years under Daryl Hazel. Coaching change and a lot of optimism now in West Lafayette. I mean, Jeff Brom, you can't say enough about the job he's done with Purdue, getting them back, playing with a ton of confidence. Mackenzie Milton, his first pass of the drive complete to Jordan Aikens. Aikens had a touchdown a moment ago. This is a guy who was on the John Mackey Award watch list for the best tight end in the country. He has been super productive over the years. Samuel Jackson has checked in at one of the guards. First time he has played this afternoon for UCF. Taj McGowan. And McGowan gets to midfield. But in Jordan Aikens for UCF, is he's a special talent. These coaches are really high on him. Returned punts in the past. I think he's their third punt returner. He's returned kickoffs before. He can kind of do it all. He's a big athlete of 260 pounds. Blitz off the edge. Milton realizes it. Completes his pass to Smith. Draquan Smith, what a wonderful safety valve he is. Beautiful job, Kenzie Milton recognizing man coverage on the outside, putting a little bit, just enough touch on the football to allow Draquan Smith to adjust to it. That's almost, I mean, it's so hard to cover as a defensive back. He had an that ultimate back trust yeah. in Smith as well, that he threw it before he was out of his break, before he came back. It's a lot of off-season work, working guys, timing, rhythm. And you have to trust that Smith's going to come back to the ball because if he takes that vertical and the DB sits on it, that's going to the house for six. First down and ten. Under a half minute remaining third quarter. McGowan. That quite possibly could be the final play of our third quarter. Can't imagine that UCF is going to be in a hurry to get another playoff. No, we'll definitely take a fourth quarter. The quarterback Milton just put four fingers in the air, signaling that the fourth quarter is just around the bend. So Scott Frost and the UCF Knights, they roll into College Park, and after three quarters, they've got a 21 to 10 lead. FS1 College Football will continue from College Park after these messages. We have made it to uh, the crust of the biscuit, the hardest part. Quarter number four. So far through 45 minutes, it's a 21-10 lead for UCF. Big story, Kasim Hill, true freshman quarterback for Maryland, knocked out of the game in the first quarter, and they have struggled mightily offensively without him. Jordan Aikens, free down the middle, takes it to the five, to the game quarter number four. Jermaine Carter saved the touchdown. Jermaine Carter got away with a little tug of the jersey as well on Aikens. Great play call here for Scott Frost and UF UCF. Jermaine Carter, I mean, that's it's not terrible coverage, just a perfect ball. It's tough. There's, there's big, long receivers like Aikens. It's hard to, uh, to cover when the ball is put on the spot. And Maryland trying to get the right defenders on the field. They have to call the timeout. 
So Maryland already down by 11. You think the timeouts may be important to them. If they're going to mount a comeback, they've got to burn one. I think each timeout is massively important for this Maryland team. Yeah. This is not an injury timeout. This is a true timeout for Maryland. That is Kingsley Opara down on the ground being looked at. And you see UCF getting up the line of scrimmage. Looked like they were going to go faster and a slew of guys late getting on the field. Oh, oh wow. Uh, you hate to think anything dubious, but you just kind of saw Ken Kingsley oh. Opara. <laughs> when you're facing a tempo team, that Anything. is in the playbook. Come sure. on, Eric. Come on, Eric. You can't be too naive. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? That's a, that's all gamesmanship. It's I part give of the, the game. benefit of the doubt. If you they're know, running, it. hey, I'll give the benefit of the doubt. He's a smart football player. Yeah. And he knows how to go down when, yeah. when you have guys running on and off the field. I'm not saying he did that on purpose, but if he did, good on you. Well, he's got to stay out for a play because he was looked at medically. So he's not on the field right now. First down and goal. Ball's at the five. Trying to get to the corner. This is Smith. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Save on Walker. Tackle by Isaiah Davis. And on cue, Kingsley Opara comes sprinting back up on the field. This is an impressive answer. <laughs> so, yeah. This is an impressive answer so far for UCF. Giving up the touchdown to Maryland. This was one of those must score drives for them to keep the comfortable lead. And they've driven right down the field. Milton and McGowan in the backfield. Milton wants to keep it. Throws out in space. It's caught. But an immediate tackle of Smith. He couldn't get away from Jermaine Carter, the so senior captain. Touchdown saving tackle here by Darnell Savage on the one just to hold on for dear life and wait for the cavalry to show up. Third down and goal. McGowan. No. It's fourth down. Much players stood up pretty quickly there to stop the momentum. And here comes the field goal unit. It took a while for Scott Frost to make that decision. But a field goal here is, you'd assume, the right decision. Oh, it's definitely 14. the right decision. And I think he was just trying to let a little bit of the play clock run down before his kicking team went out there. It's no question. It was a no brainer. You don't ever try to go for it when you can go up 24 to 10. Got an experienced kicker, and Matthew Wright. Three for three, a point after touchdowns. This is his first field goal, and it's a no doubt about it shot. Lead is back up to 14 for the UCF Knights. The Knights looking for their second win of the year. First one came 23 days ago. They've got a chance. Quarter number one was relatively quiet. UCF did not score, but ever since they've scored in every quarter, and they currently lead 24 to 10. Field goal just a moment ago. And now Maryland will get the football back. Remember, Maryland scored a touchdown last time they had it. Ty Johnson back deep. And Johnson's going to stay in the end zone. Well, leading into October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. We support their vision of creating a world in which domestic violence is not tolerated and where victims and survivors are supported and empowered. Find out how you can join the conversation. Maybe starting to get into a rhythm now. It was impressive on that last drive that led to a touchdown. DJ Moore, the man in motion. This is Moore, and the pass is too high. At a tight end, Derek Hayward. 
get ready to throw a block for him, but the pass is incomplete, second and ten. Those short passes can be a great supplement to the run game. Just get it to a receiver, but the critical thing about him, you have to give a receiver a ball he can turn the corner with and make some moves, because if it's off target, it blows up the whole play. Even worse, you can't complete it. Oh, my. <laughs> Just a tremendous bull rush. Save on Lowry. Oh, his <laughs> offensive lineman into Bolton Schlager. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a that, now that's not really fair from my man Lorenzo Harrison trying to come up there, step up. Lorenzo Harrison's 5'8", 195, trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 6'3", 287. That's his not only, fair. His only chance is to try <laughs> to chop him down. A lot of times coaches won't let you chop in the A-gap, though, if the quarterback's right behind you. Yep. Third down at 20 after the loss of 10. Harrison trying to get it back. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line. A pickup of 12, maybe 13. Richie Grant the tackle, and the punt team will have to come on. Now that drive stalled on a bad first pass, mm -hmm. and then just the bull rush of Savon Lowry creating a huge negative play. And the clock continues to tick, much to the chagrin of the Maryland Terrapins. Lees, fair catch called for and made. UCF ball at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Maryland's running out of time. 11:07 remaining in quarter number four. They're down by two touchdowns. Welcome back, everyone. We're in College Park, Maryland, not too far away from our nation's capital. UCF leading Maryland by a score of 24 to 10. Shot of the uh, Washington Monument, A.J. Hawk, I know you knew this, but I believe at one point when it was first built, that was the largest man-made structure in the world. Yep, of course I knew that one, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Learned about that sophomore year at Ohio State, right? Mm -hmm. UCF with the football trying to milk some clock. They give it to the true freshman, Cordarian Richardson. And he's pushed out of bounds by J.C. Jackson. You guys know about my man Cordarian Richardson, right? He's committed to Maryland. And oh, then he yeah. actually committed to Maryland. Get this, because this, I haven't heard this one yet. From outer space. What? <laughs> so he had a, like a little drone and had it risen to outer space and had some graphics and it selected the school as Maryland. But then he obviously switched to UCF the last minute, so. I'm sure Maryland fans are not loving seeing him tote the rock <laughs> for the Knights. These signing days are getting out of control. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> Milton shakes the first tackler. Still on his feet. Oh, Mackenzie Milton out across the 40. And it'll bring up third down at the manageable. He's, four five. He's wiry. You know, we met him yesterday, got to talk to him. He's from Hawaii. He's not the biggest guy. He's pretty small. You wonder how he takes some of these hits. But he just has a knack for eluding tacklers and just move, shifting his body around. He has some Baker Mayfield in him, as yeah. you said earlier. Third down and four. Quickly over the middle. Passes caught. That'll be a first down. Traquan Smith, the junior, with the catch. That is now 115 career catches for Smith. And he's just the junior. They've had some good receivers over the years, UCF. Brandon Marshall went there. Uh, Michael Sims Walker was a good player for a while. A couple of tight ends in this formation. UCF definitely looking to slow it down a bit, eat up some of this clock. Try to have a nice long eight to nine minute drive here. Anderson. We're just Anderson doing with a foot race down the right sideline. Out of bounds inside the 10. Most impressive run for Otis Anderson, 45 yards. Well, this player listed as a wide out. But the coaches said he's a hybrid. He can really do a lot of different things. Gets the ball out of the backfield. Some solid blocking. 
around him and allowed that play to bounce to the outside and the speed takes over. And UCF looking to go for the dagger. It's incredible. Darnell Savage saves the touchdown. It is incredible, Eric, how these young freshmen, true freshmen, can come in here and have an impact instantly. They come in ready to play the day they step foot on campus. And a flag comes in from the back judge. Play game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. How many times is UCF going to get a delay of game penalty this year? That's not the worst one in the world, to tell you the truth. Gives you a little bit more space in the passing yeah. game. If you're a quarterback, Danny, how, how tough is it to throw in a condensed field, say you're on the 10-yard line going in? I would rather have the extra five yards any time. Just it opens up a little bit more windows in the corner areas, down the middle of the field. It just allows things to open up a little bit more. As you get closer, you have to be so much more precise with the football, and those windows close rapidly. Killens. Great open field tackle. He's dropped. Antoine Brooks has had a nice game. You can feel this slipping away from Maryland right now. Turnover is really, they have to be thinking that. Hold him up, strip the ball. Second and goal, Cordarian Richardson checks back into the game. He'll be in the backfield next to Milton. This is Killens, breaks the first wave and scores untouched. Adrian Killens scores from 15 yards out and not one Maryland defender laid a hand on it. Watch the great block downfield by tight end Jordan Aikens here. He pops in the screen right there. Has a great block on Darnell Savage, the talented DB for Maryland. And you feel this one slipping away quickly if you're a Maryland Turk. Adrian Killens weighs 158 pounds. He took it right between the tackles and was not touched. Matthew Wright. Another extra point, his fourth, and the lead is 31 to 10. 21 point lead for the visitors from Orlando. Touchdown, Adrian Killens. And UCF looking for a big time win. DJ Durkin, none too pleased at what's happening. Lost his true freshman quarterback that everyone is so excited about in the first quarter. And now his defense that he is closely uh, worked with in recent weeks. His defense starting to fail as well. They've given up 31 points to the UCF Knights. It's got to be frustrating to be DJ Durkin right now. All the momentum, everyone was talking great about this program, the direction we're going, to see Hill, the young quarterbacks playing well. He goes down. You find yourself losing 31-10 to the Turks. Ty Johnson gets up to the 20. To so UCF. Sorry about that, Eric. I always think that uh, DJ Durkin has such an interesting background. You talk to head coaches, and everyone comes from certain trees, a lot of different trees usually, because no one really stays in the same spot for a long time. He was, uh, he had the opportunity to work under both Urban Meyer early in his career, mm -hmm. Bowling Green. He has also obviously worked most recently with Jim Harbaugh as his defensive coordinator in Ann Arbor with the Michigan Wolverines. So the two Titans in uh, the modern day Big Ten football uh, were both mentors to DJ yeah. Durkin. And a lot of times when you see younger coaches get opportunities, it's so vital to them to have been in those environments because that's where they cut their teeth. That's where they learn how to be a head coach. You can learn from the best. It's got to be helpful. Morton Schlager is smoked. Brought down again by Jemias Pittman. Now this is the nuts and bolts of DJ Durkin's career. He is a Youngstown, Ohio native, played collegiately at Bowling Green. He, uh, this is his second year at Maryland. He's been in the SEC at Florida. Of course, he's been in the Mid-American Conference, and he's been in the Big Ten before coming here to a Big Ten East team. False start, offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, second down. You know what else you need to kind of get a program going? You need some good luck, and these injuries are really not very fortunate for Maryland. When you lose your starter out at Texas in Pigram, and then Kasim Hill is out here, and everybody's excited. Now you're on your third quarterback. It is so hard to overcome. It's the most important position in the game. 
Doesn't matter what school you're at. Yeah. If your top two quarterbacks go right. down, it's at, an uphill battle. Look at Florida State. I mean, they lost their starter. Now they lost to NC State today. They were thinking to play for a national championship coming in. It's just so tough to overcome. And if you don't have one, it's an uphill battle. I'm just curious from you guys as former players. We haven't heard any update. Maryland has not given us an update whatsoever on Kasim Hill and what his potential injury was. As a player, if you're a teammate, do you hear whispers? Do you have an idea about yeah. injuries? When no you're question. There? You're yeah. asking the trainers. You're asking anybody who's been in the locker room with him. What's up? What's he going? Is it? Is this a, a, a season-long injury? Will he be back next week? Couple weeks? You're trying to get all the information you can. What fun? DJ Moore just willing himself close to the first down marker. They're going to say he's just short, but they're going to have to go for it now because it's they're as close as they are. Fourth down and one. Try to keep the game alive. It's an inside. Nope, the fake the inside hand up. Bortschlager keeps it as the first down. You know, the game might be getting out of hand here, but these are vital reps for Max Bortenschlager where he can kill, you know, hopefully build some confidence. The more reps you get, the better. This is the best teaching opportunity for him. The receiver, Davenport, was down when he caught the football. So the clock moves. There's a pickup of nine on first down. First down catch, Davenport shakes a couple of tackles and gets across the 50 to the 45. And it's not going to be a lot of time for Maryland to figure things out. We don't know the severity of the injury to Kasim Hill. But the games are going to come fast and furious. They've already experienced their bye week. They had it early in the year. They're going to start Big Ten play next week, and it's on the road against a much improved Minnesota team. Oh, this will be a pick six. Mike Hughes picks up the loose football and will have an interception for a touchdown. And that will just about do it for UCF. In and out of the hands of DJ Moore, then 58 yards the other way for Mike Hughes. Uh, that's a tough break for Maryland. I mean, it's been that type of afternoon. Hits the receiver square in the chest. And Mike Hughes, as easy a touchdown in pick six as you'll get. When it rains, it pours. Yeah. The wheels have officially fallen off this Maryland program today. Their only hope now is that they can find a way to rebound and get back on track next week against an improved Minnesota team. <laughs> DJ Durkin, the look on his face says a lot. Just kind of disbelief, you kind of shake your head as this has turned into a little bit of a laugher. Just think of where he's gone mentally from five days ago until now. Yeah. Maryland was back on the map. We wanted to see what they would do. Today was their first true test after that big Texas upset. And now you have two quarterbacks go down in the first three games. And what a win this will be for the UCF Knights if they can hold on. It sure looks like they can up by 28. Hasn't been a lot to cheer about for the home team. Maryland Terrapins have trailed basically since the beginning of the second quarter against the UCF Knights. It is now 38 to 10 after the interception return for a touchdown by Mike Hughes. Johnson's going to take it out of the end zone. Ty Johnson trying to use that elite speed. He's pushed out of bounds in the 25. Now five touchdowns for UCF. First couple were scored on the ground by Taj McGowan. Then the tight end, Jordan Aikens, got involved. Touchdown number four. This is Adrian Killick, wasn't touched for 15 yards, and then a moment ago, Mike Hughes, 58 yards. Ball is in and out of the fingers of D.J. Moore. Hughes picks it up, and it's his first Division I touchdown. He is a junior college transfer that showed up on campus August 18th did Mike Hughes, and he immediately was deemed a starter. He was that good and that impressive the first week that he showed up in Orlando. Interesting with the run play coming out on first down here. Almost conceding. Yeah. Second and 12 from the 23.
And again, Borton Schlager is hammered. Talk about conceding, AJ. I wonder if some of it is protecting their quarterback. Being on the third quarterback this season, not wanting to get him killed back there like they did this time. But this offensive line is struggling with this very deep UCF front. Danny, we don't know with the situation with Kasim Hill, but if for some reason Hill can't play and Max Bortenschlager is going to get the start next week, what's his life going to be like over the next seven days? A cram session. I mean, you got to be in there. Extra film, extra time with your coaches. Grab a receiver or two after practice. Get DJ Moore. Run some routes with him. It is going to be a cram session for him. Bortenschlager again takes a heavy hit. Just whoever UCF puts on that defensive front wall is getting to the quarterback. The question is who is behind Ortenschlager? Shane Cockrell, another number 18 on this team linebacker. Holding defense, number 24, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Cockrell has started a game at quarterback, although he is the starting linebacker on this team and a great defensive player. He has played quarterback in the past. I wonder, is he the fourth option? Well, he was a quarterback under a different coaching staff, a different offensive coordinator. I don't know. If that that, just, that kind here. of explains like how bad it's been at the quarterback position here. Just extremely bad luck. Quick hit at this time. Bortenschlager does not get hit. That's a lot of action. Five sacks, six times he's been hit. Seven times hurried. I'd say this, this UCF defense is really impressive. That front, seven of theirs, the defensive line with those six, three, 310 pound guys all across the board. They got some depth. You know, as we look for a group of five team to play in that New Year's six, UCF's making a pretty strong case. Well, they lost a chance for a big win. They were supposed to play Georgia Tech at their place. But that game was canceled and will not be made up because of Hurricane Irma. That could be a factor. Yeah, oh, it absolutely will be a factor. Maryland had two games affected. Their game against, I'm sorry, UCF had two games affected. Their game against Memphis was postponed. They're actually going to make up that game uh, September 30th. That's next week. But then the game against Georgia Tech that was supposed to be played September 16th. Maybe weather-wise they could have played it, but their home building, Spectrum Stadium, was being used by the National Guard, so that took priority. So that game was canceled, and it will not be made up. They have added another game. They're going to play Austin P. But a win against Austin P. say what you want about Austin P. does not have the same stature as a win against Georgia Tech would have had. And again, UCF content to let passes be completed underneath and then make a tackle. And that's where I think the committee has to look at it and really take that in consideration, that it really wasn't UCF's fault. And I know they plug a lot of equations into a computer and it spits out a lot of data, but that's when the film study comes in. You have to put in a performance like this and see how they play against the other teams in the American Conference and then make your evaluation based on that. Morton Schlager just has to fall on it. They've had a couple of wonky center quarterback exchanges. The committee needs to look at that rule. I think it needs to be like the NFL where you're, you got to be touched down. Yeah, I'm with you. I think there are a lot of rules that it would be so much easier time-wise. I mean, we see four-hour games in college football that are really unnecessary. Go to the same clock system that the NFL does. Do the, the touchdown, you know, whether you're down by contact or not. Take that away. And then I, I would love to see them make two feet inbounds for college football. These, these are great athletes we're seeing playing. They're more than capable of doing it. And it prepares them for the next level. Mike Hughes with the fair catch. He wants to check in with Greg Wolf in L.A. for a game break. Eric, thanks. Let's go to Death Valley, number two, Clemson. 18 straight wins in ACC play, but Boston College proving tougher than expected. Adam Choi, six-yard score. Clemson takes their first lead of the second half. Kelly Bryant, just 127 yards passing and two picks, but the Tigers lead 14-7. Guys? Thank you, Greg. Maybe something to keep an eye on. I think that uh, Clemson's working in a deep kicker. Didn't they lose their kicker? Yes, in practice, yeah. which really went towards ACL, but... A lot of teams that, and this is that point of the season where you find out about teams. Three and four weeks in, some teams look really good on paper. Oklahoma State, a lot of people said, I thought myself, I thought that offense was unstoppable. They're getting beat by TCU right now. I thought Clemson had a chance to really impress and struggling. You got to take care of business every week.
Wasn't that Florida State that used to have troubles keeping the kickers healthy? Bizarre things used to happen to the Seminole kickers back in the 90s. We just missed a lot of kicks. I don't know if they were keeping healthy. We had a lot of wide right situations. Yeah. And then Sebastian Janikowski came in and changed yeah, the course of yes. history for you guys. Noah Vedrill is in the game at quarterback, so Mackenzie Milton, his day is done. Kudos to Milton. He avenges last year's performance where he turned the football over way too many times in his eyes. In the loss against Maryland, this time he's going to orchestrate a win. So Mackenzie Milton and the Knights are going to go to 2-0. and And we're going to tell you where Noah Vedrill, the quarterback, is from. Start. Just because it's fun to say. Number 73, five drop penalty, second down. Number 16 in white, Noah Vedrill. He is a true freshman. He is from Wahoo, Nebraska. W-A-H-O-O. That's cool. I've never even heard of that town. Have you guys heard of that city? Oh, I'm sure there's maybe <laughs> 16 people live there. All right, good. I'm guessing his family are Scott Frost fans. That's yeah. for sure. Scott Frost talked about it. He said this team's going to have three or four opportunities to take the next step as a program, and this was one of them. And they definitely took a giant step forward today, handily beating this Maryland team. Greg McCray. With a carry. That's his first carry of the afternoon. Just a, a snap or two more, and this one will be in the history books. Danny, don't you think it's more impressive how they won? They, oh, yeah. They dominated up front. Yep. Offensively, defensively, Maryland was not able to get that explosive running game going. The big guys up front for UCF deserve a lot of credit for this one. And how about the crowd that's trans traveled from Orlando? UCF crowd has been with it. They're taking over the stadium. Yeah. Yeah. False start. Offense. Number 74. Five yard penalty. First down. I believe for a long time UCF is kind of a sleeping giant. And they, they get a lot of talent state playing in the American Conference, a pretty good spot where you can have that chance to play for New Year's Six. Now they got a great coach in Scott Frost. They've had NFL talent there before. They were winless in 2015. Scott Frost leads him to six wins a year ago and a bowl game. And now, in the second game of 2017, they win on the road in a Big Ten venue. UCF Knights 2-0 for the first time in four years. Congratulations to them and DJ Durkin and the Maryland Terrapins. Now it's back to the drawing board trying to figure out their quarterback situation. UCF after 23 days off, playing their first game since August 31st. They win going away against the Maryland Terrapins. Our final score is 38 to 10. Thanks for watching FS1 College Football from College Park. For Danny Cannell and A.J. Hawk, this is Eric Collins saying so long from Maryland. Let's get you back to Los Angeles for more college football.